had this pile of dirt here for a while we finally decided to put a little pergola up in this area some leveling it off gonna compact it once it's leveled by hand once it's compacted again I'll just do a little fine-tuning to the leveling and the grading um, just so that when I do put in the pergola it's all nice and even and the thing isn't lopsided This is what it looks like before it gets compacted. To do a little grading along the edge here. Just so when it rains the water doesn't pool up in there. I went to the local hardware store and rented this 14 inch plate compactor to compact the dirt. Compact it. Feels really good when you walk on it. The dirt no longer slips out from under your feet. There might be a little grading left to do, but for the most part, it's done. Here's a closer look at that, uh, it's actually called galvanized hardwire cloth. So I'm cutting out inserts for the trees, leaving the corners undone once I get to this corner here. So that once I slide it in to these center trees, I can then make the cuts for that tree, that tree, not that tree, but the trees on the left and right as well. Did a little more grading over the gopher mesh protection. And now I'm laying down the weed barrier, cutting it around the trees. The one on the left still needs some trimming along the wall. Um, I will recommend this when you're using these type of uh, lawn staples, the ones with the uh, wider top. Uh, it's been my experience that a hammer or a mallet with a bigger striking area works best because I find that when I use my framing hammer, which has a smaller striking area. The staples tend to bend and warp when they hit something like a rock or something underground. Whereas this mallet, four pound mallet with a bigger striking area. And heavier weight. It seems to drive them in um, a lot easier without warping them. Unboxing time. All right. In this box, we have a tabletop and armrests. This is what those three pieces look like one armrest, two armrests. That's the bottom of the tabletop. Second box I'm opening just reads metal components and just as it says 
comes with metal components. Each box has its own packing list, so you can cross-reference what's in each box. Let's move on to box number three. All right, the third box I'm opening up. Composite panels. Let's take a look at these. All right, so these are the panels. Turns out they're wood. From the pictures, I thought they might be metal, but they are wood. Box number three that I'm popping open. That includes the instructions, the lumber, and some additional metal accessories. Let's see what's in here. pull this stuff up. Alright, so these two long thin metal pieces came out of that third box. Let's go see what else is in there. So here we are. It looks like it's at least three posts. A few other things. After this box, there's one more underneath that's similar. This long thinner one and the big one over there. The big one over there has cushions, so we'll get to that one last. So here is the entire contents of that third box. It's two metal uh, flat pieces. These uh, wooden boards. Additional wooden boards. Everything is labeled. And these three pillars, all of which are labeled, and all of which are hollow. So they look heavy, but in reality they're not. Here we are, it looks like it's at least three posts, a few other things. After this box, there's one more underneath that's similar, this long thinner one, and the big one over there, that big one over there has cushions, so we'll get to that one last. So here is the entire contents of that third box, it's two metal uh, flat pieces. These uh, wooden boards, additional wooden boards, everything is labeled. And these three pillars, all of which are labeled, and all of which are hollow. So they look heavy. But in reality, they're not. Okay, this next box, which I believe to be five, lists the contents as plastic accessories, metal accessories, and premium lumber. Let's open it up. All right, this last box was small or smaller. But they managed to pack all of this wood and all of these plastic pieces into it. Two more boxes, then we'll start building. All right, box number six metal components. Let's break it open. Yep. 
these are all the bags of screws additional plastic pieces additional metal pieces to put this thing together now some of them are labeled sticker some of them are labeled with black ink on the actual bag so be careful when you're handling them because some of them seem to kind of rub off came with a few things a screw setter a couple bits for the power tools couple hand wrenches so we're gonna get this uh, assembled and get uh, it going the instructions don't give you any more images other than that which makes this part a little confusing. What I've gathered so far, it's at the short, of the short end of the bracket, because there's a short end and a long end. The short end goes up against uh, the big beam. The long end goes up against the side piece that spans across to the, the other beam. Then the bolts go just like in the image. So here's step one. That's what it's supposed to look like. Those are two pieces, the long one. And then the end piece here is just decorative. Seems a little crooked now, but when I end up tightening all the bolts, um, I can make it level. All right, moving on to step two. It is essentially the same as step one, just on the other side. So we're using the same screws, same nuts, same washers, same brackets, just on the other side. With some help, I was able to bring the first piece out here to its final destination. I'm gonna start building the, I guess the second part of the L so that it stands on its own and I don't have to worry about it anymore. I don't have to worry about it tipping over anymore. So let's get to it. Putting up the L, I ran into a bit of a problem. The holes in the bracket are a little too small for the uh, anchors to go in, anchor screws. So, just took my mallet, hammer, and hammered them in a little bit before dealing with the rest of it. I'm using this box here. 
to help with the gap between the two pieces of wood so that when I come here and try to put it all together it's not too big of an issue starting on step three step three requires four brackets two three four eight screws labeled 391 found one bag with only seven screws so I thought I have to make a phone call or find a replacement in my garage however upon further inspection I realized or I guess I found another bag with the same kind of screws also labeled 391 which has more than enough screws to complete this task mounting the brackets if you look carefully there's already holes pre-drilled one there and one there for the top brackets the same down here the opposite side also has the same holes to the actual supports so that when we mount them to the post all we got to do is screw them into the post otherwise we can't slide it into the one bracket and the other bracket that goes on the other side there's just isn't enough give on those posts so we're adding the bracket onto the support so that then we can just screw it into the post all right so when adding this piece this is the one piece support where we put the bracket screwed it straight onto the support and we're adding it to the uh, bigger framework we're just gonna slide it in there on the opposite end we're gonna find the pre-drilled screws screw holes and then just screw that in place and then we're gonna repeat with the other side on top So these are the lower supports. On one end they require brackets. The other end doesn't have anything because it's going to slip into the mounting bracket that's already on the post. This is relatively simple. Drop in the screw. This is the nut. It's got these little uh, hooks on it that will dig into the wood once you make it tight enough. I'm leaving everything nice and loose so that when it comes time to mount and tighten everything on the entire frame, I won't have any issues. Once everything is mounted and uh, square, we will go ahead and tighten everything. This side just slides in. It'll be screwed there, as well as on the back side, one screw on either side. And on this side, a couple lag bolts there. This is for the other support on the opposite side. That also has a couple lag screws. Again, everything is loose until I can get everything square. Tightening all the screws before continuing to the next step. Starting at the top and working my way down. For these two pieces, because these are two pieces, one long one, and then the decorative one that comes out, I use a couple clamps as well as my level. Just clamped the level on the right hand side, on the long side. Loosen the screws. Once they were loose, I clamped on the left hand side on the decorative piece to make sure everything was nice and level with itself so it doesn't look like it's falling. So the decorative piece isn't at an angle. And then I went and tightened all the screws 
And I did the same thing with the other decorative piece. All right, so as I'm tightening things up, I realized that this decorative piece here, where is it? There. Is facing the wrong way. This should be like this one. Easy enough fix, but it starts with the longer support in the middle. You need to undo those four bolts, come back, undo those four bolts, flip both pieces, um, and then just screw things back in place. All right, just flip the corner, tighten things up. I'll take a picture once I've got my level up there, just to make those two pieces line up. You see how if you look at it now, before everything's nice and tight, the corner piece looks like it's falling. It's angled downward. So I'll go ahead and fix that and show you how I did it. That's the setup to make the decorative end piece line up with a longer support piece. It's just a couple clamps. I'm using my level just because it's long and sturdy, but uh, two by four, one by four, just something straight will do. This next step is fairly simple. I believe these are the supports for the wood planks that will go across, the decorative ones. And it's simply one screw there, one screw there, not in bolt there. Repeat eight times. That's four there. The additional four are here. They need to go up on this side. When you attach these brackets, make sure that there's nothing on the inside of them and it screws on the outside. That'll free you up so when you attach the pieces of wood, they're clear on the inside. That's step nine. Step 10 is attaching the other beam on the outside and screwing it in using those little brackets. Now we're using these corner brackets to attach the, end, the ends of the outside beam. We're doing that next. Okay, I've got one up, one bracket up. This is the other one. It's pretty self-explanatory. Uh, don't tighten everything until you've got all four screws in and everything is aligned. Um, start with, uh, end with the lag bolts. Start with the nuts and bolts because this piece here on the left, it's got some give up and down so you can make an adjustment as needed. Using the supplied bit, just so you don't over tighten and crack the panels. It's a tight squeeze back here between the trees and the panels, but that's all you need. Two, four, it's about 10 to 12 screws on each panel. Just don't over tighten them because you'll crack the panels. Here it is with those back panels, privacy panels. Step 12 is the cabana assembly. You will need a ladder. I've taken all my um, joists and laid them out as they will go out. They're numbered, so it'd be one, two, excuse me, six, five, four, three, two, and the largest one in the center is one. And the same thing on the other side, six, five, four, three, two, one. 
I've set up all the uh, lag bolts I'm going to need. Added the uh, washers to it. I like doing this ahead of time so that I'm not fiddling with it when I need it. And here we go. If you're able to make your life easier, I'm just popping the screws ahead of time before going up to try to put them in place. Here's something to look out for. And I'm just learning this now, and it wasn't clear to me in the instructions. The top joists have pre-drill holes on this uh, piece of wood here. When I put it together, I didn't realize it. So I, the pre-drilled holes are underneath. So see here they are. Rather than you know just drill holes on top, I'm going to take the center piece and flip it, which is going to be a little difficult because the metal beam is in, on the inside so wish me luck so it took a little haggling but I got it done as you can see here are the pre-drilled holes and they line up with the ones in the back as well as the ones on that beam back there now it's just a matter of lining these things up and getting all of these holes uh, getting all these screws back in Step 13 and 14 are required for anchoring the post into concrete. I'm not anchoring this into concrete because I've got no fear that the wind will take it given that it's an open pergola top and it's heavy enough that the wind won't move it. It gets windy here, January, February. Uh, okay. Step 15 requires this sign to be attached to it. Gotta check with the wife first, see if she wants that on there. Uh, if she does, I'll add it on later. There's no rush on that. So now we're moving on to step 16, which is starting on the seat assembly. Step 16, it's four pieces, one, two, three, four, the arm post and the frame end. Make sure that before you take them out of the bags, you see what the numeration is for each one. So this is arm post 106, and it goes with frame end 60. The numeration is on the actual bags. 106 I'm using the 60 trash as a trash the 60 bag as a trash bag but there it is and do them one at a time so you don't get mixed up and have to try to sort this stuff out out after once you got these two together there's a snap in cover that goes up here So the two armrests are assembled. Moving on to step 17. Attaching them to the wooden fixture. These holes you have to pre-drill. And I'm using these clamps to make sure that armrest is square on both sides. So then you pre-drill and slide in your lag bolt. Where are we? And it's five of them. Make sure you pay attention to the instructions because you're supposed to skip the, one of the holes on here. So you're going to drill, drill, skip, drill. The bases are self-explanatory. Just lift up the entire structure and slide it under.
step 18. Seems to be this is the center which supports the seating as well as a little table. Putting the center table together, I recommend you uh, use the Allen wrenches provided. Tighten it by hand. Don't use the power tool because you may strip the inside of the uh, this thing, and it'll just spin instead of tightening. Taking a quick break before continuing with the remainder of this to make time to seal all the wood and all the wood joints and all the spots where we drilled for holes or there were holes pre-drilled for screws. Um, it already comes sealed, but a little extra protection can't hurt in my opinion. And I'd rather do it now because I like the color rather than wait for eight wait for it to age a little bit get darker and then seal it then and keep that color so step 19 requires us to measure 23 and a half inches from the inside of the post to the center of where the center table piece is supposed to be it's part of the seating assembly but it's also where the tabletop goes um, finding it kind of difficult because I'm not sure if I need to center it within these three boards I know it's 23 and a half inches from the center out but where does the screw lie here so what I'm going to do is take some painters tape tape it on the inside of the legs that are going to attach, mark off the holes, attach the tape to the actual wood boards before drilling, and then I'll drill through those holes so that when I come across with the screws, the holes are in the right place. I don't want to make multiple holes on these boards if I can avoid it. Let's see how that works out. Okay, so I'm dry fitting now what would be step 20, which is, where are we here? This crossbar here and that crossbar there. Mainly because little tabletop, I need to know where the screws are going to be. So like I said previously, along this foot here and that foot there, I'm going to use painter's tape along the back to make sure that my screw holes are in the right place on this beam here and that beam there so that when I screw in from the back side I don't have to make multiple holes and the reason why I put these two metal cross beams now my floor isn't completely level because there's dirt underneath and I needed to make sure that the screw holes and everything is going to end up in the right place. I'm screwing in these I-beams, I'm using a level just to make sure that these things are as level as I can get them so that when the base comes in on this side, I won't have, I can minimize the issues if any. There we go. I'm back here measuring. I got my 23 and a half from the inside of this post to this line here. Using a level, measuring on the two posts. I brought the line all up and down 
so that I can then measure 10 and 1 eighths, 18 and a half, and the last one is 25 and 3 quarters for the screw holes that need to go into this metal beam that's over there. I dry fitted uh, those two support beams from step uh, 20. That's like the rail. Um, just to make sure that the center table was level. I'm having issues with that. Uh, it's a little off the ground with it being dry fit. So I'm gonna make, follow the instructions complete step 19 by pre-drilling these holes, attaching the inside piece, and then completely screwing the other hole, the other cross beams for the seating. When making your measurements for the three holes that hold the table legs onto the frame, I recommend you make the holes one at a time. Do your first one, make sure the screw goes in the right place. Move on to the second one, move on to the third, that helped me out with the first set of uh, holes. Now I've moved on to the other side, and I'm gonna do the same thing. Took some time, but the table legs are in. Now it's time to screw these in to place. I think it's step 20. And it's fairly simple. Got screw on top, screw on the bottom, right, bolt on top, bolt on the bottom, and repeat four more bolts, and you're good to go. Moving on to step 21. Step 21 is relatively simple one washer, one nut, one bolt times two, this piece, as you can see I've already started, <laughs> alright I gotta turn the camera off. Most of them are loose. As for the instructions, so that when you go mount it on the actual frame, they can make adjustments as needed. Both benches are in. Just need a little fine tuning because they're not level. Again, I'm on dirt and my dirt is graded um, so that the water doesn't pull up anywhere. So I just need to. You know, tweak it a little here, raise one side, lower another, etc. But we're almost there. Almost there. Moving on to the armrests and the tabletop. Because I my floor is graded. And it's not all even because it's dirt. I had to make a few adjustments here by putting in a stepping stone because that post was previously too low. The center of the table, I had to uh, dig out a little bit of the dirt underneath because it was too high and nothing was level. I've got shims in a couple spots to try to get it as level as I could. But other than that, sturdy it's not going anywhere it's good to go tabletop now the instructions say I should measure a certain distance from the top down to put these two brackets on the inside but what I'm going to do which is going to be easier for me is just reach underneath put them in place mark it remove the tabletop that's just sitting on top drill the holes I need uh, to put in the brackets. I found it easier to do that than go by their measurements because their measurements aren't always exact because 
And again, my floor wasn't level. After setting the brackets in place, just see in the far end over there of the video, you need to put in these three screws. One, two, three. There's three on either side of the table. Just to keep it in place so it doesn't lift up. Moving on to the armrest. The armrests are pre-drilled. So when you're installing them, loosely put in all the screws. That's my next screw. You can have, where are we here? Let's get some shade. One, these are the longer ones. Two, the shorter one here. And the fourth one goes in here. Goes through there. Through a pre-drilled hole to make sure you use those to make sure everything aligns right on both the left and right armrest. 